Greetings, pen pals. This episode is going to be a little bit different today. Instead of going over one particular pen and reviewing it, I'm going to be talking about a particular brand. And with, you know, not so much with an eye towards reviewing the pens per se, but just sort of the sort of um, perception slash um, uh, general opinion and view of the brand, because it's one I do get asked about a bit uh, by people once they find out that I'm a fountain pen enthusiast. So the ba- brand, of course, is Mont Blanc. Um, so. Mont Blanc is actually a uh, German uh, a firm, uh, even though it has a French-sounding name, da- named after a mountain in France. So they've done a really good job of marketing and positioning their products, uh, etc., in such a way to be a really, really high-end luxury pen brand. It's so much, in fact, that I don't think there's a new fountain pen that Mont Blanc currently makes that retails for less than say six or six or seven hundred dollars nowadays i think that they're actually quite an expensive uh, brand that wasn't always the case if you go back to say the 1960s or the 1970s this is a mont blanc model 220 this is back from the day uh, and this is a long since discontinued pen but this was back from the day in the day when they made somewhat reasonably priced pens this one it does have a 14 karat gold uh, nib and it writes beautifully and it's a piston filler and it's sort of has a macrolon finish it's, uh, should be reminiscent isn't very much of a Lamy 2000 because it came around right around the same time also from another German pen manufacturer etc so I actually have a whole nother video that I made a few years ago where I compared this pen to a Lamy 2000 so you, should, so you should check that out my point being is this is sort of a medium range general util- utilitarian pen not necessarily really a luxury item that Mont Blanc used to make uh, they got out of this market a while ago to focus exclusively on the higher end pens. Now, not to say they're necessarily all flashy. So, for example, this is the Mont Blanc 149, which is their flagship pen. I mean, it's a big pen, but it's not a particularly flashy pen. This is sort of the classic Mont Blanc, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, iconic uh, flagship model pen. They do make pens that are quite, quite flashy. To take an uh, extreme example, at least from the ones I have in my collection, this is a Mont Blanc Duke of Milan, um, which is an extremely elaborate pen um, and a uh, vi- big, big, heavy pen. This is a hundred grams of sterling silver. So you, as you can imagine, this thing is big, heavy, and not uh, inexpensive by any means. Uh, 18 karat gold nib. So Mont Blanc has basically positioned themselves as sort of the brand that people think of when they say name a fountain pen that's a high-end pen that's uh, 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 really well made and uh, you know kind of up there on the price scale. Um, not necessarily the absolute most expensive and not absolutely the best, but just really really well made, really good, uh, etc. And they've done a really good job of positioning themselves in that niche now if that sounds like another brand in another uh, type of product uh, you wouldn't be the first person to think that so the thing that this that comes to mind when i think of another brand that's positioned themselves exactly that same way it would be this one so when you say to the average person walking down the street such as myself who's not a watch expert or even a watch enthusiast by any means uh, name a fancy watch a brand of fancy watch rolex would definitely be the one that i think would come to mind for a lot of people is it the best watch made Probably not. Is it the most expensive watch that there is? Certainly not. Is it really, really, really well-made product? Yeah, it really is. And you could say the exact same thing about uh, Mont Blanc. So they've done a really, really good job at positioning themselves in that uh, high-end uh, pen sphere. Now, would it be great if they started manufacturing you know, middle-of-the-road pens like this? Yeah, I think it really would be. Like, I'm not saying come out with a bunch of $10 and $20 or even $50 or $100 pens. Re-release this pen at $199, Mont Blanc. You would sell an awful lot of these. I really don't think it would diminish your high-end products uh, in any way, but... Uh, and the pen community would absolutely love you because I think we could definitely use something like this in the, in the marketplace. Um, so in any case, when people ask me, 
uh, when they find out I'm a fountain pen enthusiast, the question I get asked very often is, you must have a lot of Mont Blanc pens. And well, yeah, I do, and I've accumulated them over the years. I'm not necessarily a Mont Blanc expert or, you know, or a Mont Blanc uh, authority by any means, but I do have quite a few of them. So let's go through some of the Mont Blanc pens in my collection. I could tell you a couple of interesting stories behind them. Some of these I've done individual reviews on. Some of these I have not. If you're interested in seeing uh, a detailed review of any of these that have, I have not done a detailed review of yet, please just leave a comment and let me know, and I'll, I'll get it on the list. So this one is a uh, Mont Blanc um, uh, 144. This um, is, uh, was given to me as a gift in the early 1990s. It has a really nice 14 carat uh, yellow gold uh, monotone nib, a uh, smallish nib, but it's a pretty small pen. It's a cartridge converter pen um, um, with uh, uses a Mont Blanc. Uh, this has a Mont Blanc converter, but uh, Mont Blanc uses Mont Blanc converters are standard international, so that is pretty nice. To use Mont Blanc cartridges. Now this is a a pull to uncap pen. What's really interesting is they still make the uh, 144, albeit in all sorts of different colorways and materials. So this is also a 144, uh, a much more modern one in um, a steel and uh, carbon fiber. A really, really nice pen. I did a detailed review of this one not that long ago. Uh, this one is a much newer pen, and this one is a screw to uncap uh, pen, and it has this also really, really nice dual uh, tone uh, nib. Um, uh, pretty much the same size nib, but uh, it's a it's a uh, it's a dual tone uh, it's a dual tone uh, uh, nib. Um, again, uh, the newer one is a screw cap, which I think is is, is preferable for a higher end pen like this. The uh, older one had a pull cap, which a little curious to me. That I find that a little curious, but I guess it's just a f uh, a feature of the era. Uh, in which it was made. Both uh, car pens are cartridge um, uh, converter. So this is the 144. This one I've had f since the early 1990s, and this one just for a few years. Um, next up, we sort of have the classics. So um, one other thing that uh, Mont Blanc is uh, sort of known for is this iconic cigar-shaped pen. So this is uh, almost the identical pen. This is the 149 uh, and this is the 146. 149 is generally considered to be their flagship uh, pen and the 146 is just a slightly smaller version. So if we can actually compare all three sizes of this, you can see uh, 144, 146, 149. Um, and um, again, a similar uh, or almost a virtually identical style pen, just really a difference in size. There is actually quite a bit of difference in the nib and the filling mechanism as well. So uh, this smaller pen is a cartridge converter. These two are piston filled pens. Now this pen has a 14 carat uh, dual tone nib, um, uh, a really nice nib. Um, this pen is uh, ha also has a 14 carat nib in dual tone, but if you were to buy this pen today, it would have an 18 carat nib. So this is a vintage pen. Uh, it has an ebonite feed and a 14 carat nib. The newer ones would all have a plastic feed and a 18 carat nib. The only time you'll find an 18 carat nib in an old vintage one of these is one that was specifically made for the market for France. France used to have a rule that anything, if you wanted to sell something as solid gold, it had to be 18 karat gold or higher. So in order to be able to market these in France as solid gold nibs, they had to make them 18 karat gold. So the only ones in this era, and this is from the 1970s, that would be an 18 karat gold would have been the ones that were specifically made for the market for France. So this is not made for the French market, so this has a 14 karat nib. But it does have an ebonite feed, which has long since been discontinued by Mont Blanc, which again is a shame. In particular, this is what's called a split ebonite feed. This has a little line going through the feed, as you can see, and that's a bit of sort of like a hinge. The theory being that the feed can flex slightly as the nib flexes. So that's a pretty nice feature, and um, that was why this particular pen was actually appealing to me. Again, um, this is a, uh, a vintage one from the 70s, and this is a, um, uh, a 149 with a 14 carat nib. This is a 146 
also with a 14 carat nib. Um, and here we have the 144 just for comparison for all of them. So there you go. Um, that's, uh, that is our Mont Blanc typical cigar shaped pen. So now they also uh, make what, uh, pens in different series to commemorate different things. For years, they've had a thing called the Patron of the Arts series. So this is uh, one particular Patron of the Arts, uh, the Duke of Milan series. Um, and uh, this is a, I can't really quite Im impress upon you folks how heavy this pen is. It's 100 grams and it's all sterling silver with a little bit of black enamel on it, but it's a really quite something gigantic logo just to give you an idea of the size of the Mont Blanc logo here's the 149 and here's the Duke of Milan look how the difference in size of the Mont Blanc logo on the top of the pen is really quite quite something um, this is a piston fill pen with a beautiful 18 karat gold uh, uh, nib um, it actually does post believe it or not there's sort of a, a plastic uh, or nylon I think lining in here with the threads so the threads it, it posts quite nicely and when you rotate it, the inner ring will rotate to prevent you from accidentally um, uh, 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 rotating the piston while you're doing that. So it's actually a clever uh, little mechanism that they, that they have on there. Big, big, heavy, heavy pen. Um, actually, when, when you use it unposted, it's not too bad. Posted, it's really, it's really insanely heavy, very back-weighted, etc. This is really more of a showpiece. Uh, uh, for your desk and that and a showpiece it really is because it's really just quite quite uh, quite stunning um, that is the Mont Blanc Duke of Milan they also have a series where they commemorate um, different famous celebrities and artists of accomplishment over the years so this is a Mont Blanc Alfred Hitchcock limited edition this has a ton this is also in sterling silver this has tons of cool features on it i did a detailed review where i go through each of the different things and how they tied it hitchcock in different movies etc the only thing i will point out here and if you want to see all the other details please look at the video on this one is the butcher knife clip which i just think looks amazing and actually works quite well etc so really really great uh, great pen also really nice 18 karat gold nib piston filler um, really, really nice pen. Again, big commemorative uh, pen. To give you guys a size comparison, here's the Hitchcock, here's the Duke of Milan, and here's the 149. They're uh, all very comparable to each other, so these are big, big, big pens. Um, let's keep going just a little bit. Um, I'll show you uh, folks um, uh, one more pen. Uh, this is a Mont Blanc Skywalker ceramic. So this is one is really kind of cool. It's got the Mont Blanc logo that just sort of floats uh, suspended in the acrylic there, which looks really, really nice. Um, the pattern matches all up there. It's a screw to uh, uh, uncap and it's a screw to post pen. And when you post it the and you screw to post it, the pattern lines up. Uh, there as well um, it's got a kind of an unu somewhat unusual shaped nib a little bit lamy like etc sort of also in this gunmetal finish to match the rest of the pen now this pen was originally sold as being a cartridge only not cartridge converter cartridge only so the deal with this is is that um, Mont Blanc converters won't fit in this pen but I did find this Schmidt converter that actually w did fit. So I was pretty con uh, um, uh, committed to uh, not having to use uh, cartridges in this pen. So that's uh, where that converter uh, comes from. So it was originally sold as a, uh, as a cartridge uh, only, uh, only, only uh, pen. Speaking of cartridge only, here's one that really is cartridge only. And this is a Mont Blanc Boheme. This is a pocket pen. So here, let's compare it in size. Again, we'll put it next to the 149 just so you can see. It's a tiny, tiny little pocket pen uh, with a retractable nib, which is really pretty cool. So you unscrew the cap. It, you see no nib there. You then go to post it. So you screw the, the nib on the back, and as you keep turning, the nib magically appears. So that's actually a pretty, pretty cool pretty cool feature. The thing with this is, though, because of the very small size and the very specialized mechanism, it really is... Uh, it really is cartridge only, so you unhinge that, you then um, uh, twist it, and then the cartridge will pop out for, um, 
replacement. So uh, what I typically do is I actually refill these uh, the cartridge rather than just keep uh, putting new cartridges in. But either way, it definitely is uh, a cartridge only pen. Again, a cool kind of interesting little pen from Montblanc. This is the Montblanc uh, Boheme. Um, it, I guess, wouldn't be a pen video if we didn't see some writing. Um, so for writing purposes, we're going to take a look at the Montblanc 0149. Why not? That's the flagship, and that's the one I'm going to write with, and I'm going to show you that right now. All right, folks, what we're writing with here is a Montblanc model 149, and um, this has a uh, extra fine nib in 14 carat, um, and um, it really, really writes beautiful. It's definitely a wet writer. It definitely is on the wet side, which is fine for me, especially since it's such a fine point nib. Um, it's quite smooth, has great flow, etc. So I really, really like the way this pen writes. Beautiful, beautiful writing pen. Uh, in terms of ink, this ink is also from Montblanc. So this is Montblanc Royal Blue. And um, let's talk about Montblanc inks now for just a second. Now, although Montblanc pens definitely are pretty pricey, you can't say the same about the inks. These go for about 25 bucks uh, for a 60 milliliter bottle, which is actually quite reasonable. They're packaged really in a quite a deluxe fashion and quite attractively, so they come in this little slide-out drawer, all protected foam, and the bottle itself is actually quite nice. Um, it's what they call this classic shoe-shaped bottle, so in addition to being sort of aesthetically pleasing, plus it has this gigantic logo, so if you want to put this on your desk and impress somebody, that will do the job. Um, it, uh, this, definitely, this bottle definitely uh, serves a particular function, so you dip your pen in, you fill it from this well. As that gets lower, you can tilt the ink to fill that so essentially it helps distribute the ink and keep it concentrated in this smaller area where you can fill it and get effectively use all the ink that's in the bottle so these uh, shoe shaped Mont Blanc bottles are actually quite functional quite attractive quite practical and they're pretty reasonably priced actually so we're not talking about uh, incredibly expensive ink. Now, Montblanc does make some limited edition inks, which are actually quite expensive. They usually go hand in hand with some of the limited edition pens, and those inks are actually truly limited. Sometimes that, that ink is actually quite, can be hard to find. But their normal stock uh, line of inks, and I think they have about 10 or so uh, colors, um, are actually really nice and uh, work well and are very well behaved. And again, pretty reasonably, pretty reasonably priced. Um, uh, as far as ink goes. They definitely say cheaper than, say, a J. Herban ink or, or, or some other fancy uh, European-made uh, ink. Well, I certainly hope you folks liked this uh, video. If you did, four things you could do for me are to like, comment, share, and subscribe. If you could do that, that would be very much appreciated by yours truly. Um, well, this was a little bit of a different video, but I hope you enjoyed it nonetheless. I know I certainly enjoyed making it. And until we see each other again, have a great day. Bye-bye.